All right, welcome back to YouTube Classroom. This is video number 22. This is quarter one, week five, day three. Today we are going to do final subobject model smoothing and rendering. We've got our sword from last time right here. Um, and we've got the basics down. The blade is sort of the okay, but if we render it right now, if we hit F9 and render it, you can see that a lot of the edges aren't smooth where we want them to be. There's no like smooth, uh, there's no hard edge that runs down the middle. So today we're going to get into smoothing um, in a lot more detail. Now if we go back to our original art, oops, that's the wrong folder. If we go back to our art, we remember that the the sword itself had a bunch of like pieces to it. I want to pull it up. So, um, so you can see that this hard edge through here and this hard edge here is what we're looking for. Also notice that this part here has hard edge and it also has a hard edge through there. We're going to make sure that this piece, all of these pieces have the exact same thing. So a lot of what we're going to be working with today are polygons, okay? Now the way smoothing, um, I'm gonna actually increase this out and I'm gonna hit Shift F once we get this set um, to get our uh, smoothing, uh, our area back. So. We've got, the notice, um, smoothing groups. This is number five. This is also number five. This is number five, and that's number five. Now, we want these two to be smooth, but we want a hard edge between these two and these two. So this cannot be five if we want it to keep a hard edge. So I change it to six, and this cannot be five, and it can't be six, so I'm gonna change it to seven. If I change it to seven, I get a weird shadow now what that usually means is that something's not right. And the what's not right is this must be seven as well. If I've got a seven edge and a seven edge, it tries to make it look smooth. So this side cannot be seven, it can be eight. And this here can be seven, but this cannot be seven, okay? This part here cannot be seven because you still get weird edges, okay? We said this is five. This is seven, this is six, this is eight, so this can be nine, and then this can be 10. By giving every single one of these edges a, its own thing, we can get that hard edge that we were looking for. Now what this does, is it gives us sort of a problem through here um, because it, of the way it looks. So like I said, we've got this uh, top uh, edge now. This also, this section down here needs to be its own color, uh, own separate edge. So we know that this is eight and this is seven. That means this can be anything that's not seven and eight. So this could actually be seven and this could be eight because we know this is seven, this could be seven because they're never actually going to touch. And this can be eight because it's on the other side because seven is touching eight. Now this has to be something that's not seven, or that's not eight. As long as it's not eight, and as long as it doesn't, it matches up with the other, then it's fine. So I'm gonna make this 10, all right? This uh, can't be 10, so let's make it 11. This can be 10 because it's never gonna touch that 10 over here. So these two could both be 10, like that. These two could both be 11, 11 because they will never actually touch each other. If this, notice this is five and seven, that will not work. This needs to be seven and this can be, uh, so we can do the same sort of thing. If that's eight, then this can be eight, but not five. And if this is seven, then this can be seven. All right, cool. If we do that, we shouldn't have any problems. Now this is seven and 10, which we didn't intend. So now I think that's fine. So this should, all right, see that dark edge? Something's not right. So that's six, 10, nine, eight, nine. Sometimes it's a pain to track down the offending problem. That's 11, six, 10. This might be the problem. Yep, that's the problem. So instead of having this 10, let's have it 12 and that should fix the issue. Okay, cool. So now you can see there's a hard edge. Now this weird tip doesn't have a hard tip. Like it's just sort of 
smooth edged and that's fine because that's that's how it looks in in the art now for this section the entire top and now that it's a separate object if this is seven this can be seven and it's not a problem because they're two separate objects if they were the same object it would be a problem so we don't have to worry about that the whole top can be one number I'm gonna make it all three the bottom as long as it doesn't touch can also be the same I'm gonna turn it up from two to three now from here let's go ahead and move this into make all that five and we can make all of this seven and here I'm being a little sloppy but as long as they're not the same we can make sure that they work okay cool okay so now we have our edges on this part as well so it's nice and hard all the way through whenever we move around it it seems to give us the shading we want okay that makes it look sort of smooth but still have hard edges now around here is a little different um, we're actually going to select this and hold control and hold shift and select it if I can do this I can also select these so if basically what you want to do is click one hold shift and you'll see this is new for 2018 as well which is super cool it turns gold to show you what's going to actually select so I'm going to do the same thing here so I hold shift when I click and it grabs the whole ring that's really nice because I want that to be nice and smooth so I'm going to change that to one this down here I'm going to hold shift or yeah shift and make this instead of one I'm going to make that two this part here can also be two because it's not touching this this can also be one because it's not touching that so by doing that we make it look smooth it's, now we all know that there's just 16 edges here so it's not it's not actually smooth but from far away it looks pretty nice same sort of situation down here now this whole bottom section this whole piece through here needs to be its own like separate smoothing group but we want it to be rounded so I'm going to make that number one sure by making it number one it's going to be rounded okay now this part through here now these you can actually make their own separate um, smoothing groups so we know that this is one so if we make these let's make them I don't know 12 and then we make this one mm, 20 I don't know it should be now there's going to be a subtle lip right in between the in the handle section so now this whole portion is done the whole sword is actually finished now all the smoothing groups are done we should be able to grab it and look around and make sure everything looks good um, smoothing wise now what we're going to do is create our materials the materials we're going to hit M we've got a bunch of these materials this default standard is what I'm using right now on the entire object and we're going to uh, let's go ahead and make that into a brass so I'm going to double click this um, and we're going to change the diffuse to a brass color okay cool so this is going to be brass so everything that's not brass is going to be through here with that we're going to change our gloss in our specular level actually so we've got like a, a, a sort of glossy look to it and we can you can adjust this so it looks like oops wrong I didn't mean to grab that um, you can adjust this so it looks a little more or less glossy but I want it to look brass ish so there's that so that's gonna be the brass the next thing I'm gonna create uh, I'm gonna double uh, call this mat underscore brass okay now the next thing I'm going to do is actually change the some of the other faces for the for the sword blade so I'm gonna right click materials scan line standard okay so I'm gonna change this one material number two I'm gonna call it mat underscore sword uh, blade blade is better okay so this is blade the blades going to stay a silvery white maybe I'm gonna give it a little bit of blue like that I'm gonna change the glossiness so it's cranked all the way up same thing with specular level if I double click on this you should see it's nice and shiny um, and now I should be able to grab the faces that I want so I'm gonna move this over and grab just the blade faces so I'm gonna grab all these and then I'm going to change that 
by attaching these to it like that. I'll make sure I can see it in the viewport. So there we go. So now the blade is done. Now I'm going to change the leather. The leather is going to be just these faces. Okay, so let's create a leather material. Right click, materials, scan line, standard. And this is going to call matte. Oops, make sure you get the right one. Matte leather. Okay, and this will be the grip. You could call it grip, whatever you want. I'm going to make it brown, which is over here ish. Darken it up. Burr, 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 burr. Darken, more red, darker. Cool. All right, good. And now my specular level here is going to be like that. And I'm going to soften it quite a bit so it looks like sort of some sort of leather. And then I'm going to show it in viewport and attach it to selection. So there we go. So now that's it. We've got the basic brass color. We've got it, and now we can actually render it. Now, before, if I'm gonna hit Q, I'm gonna go back here to sword, left view. The sword itself right now, if you have it set like I do, um, if you were to rotate it, it rotates from kind of a good spot, which is right above where the handle is. Um, you can set it right now if you want, rotate a little bit, hit perspective, and try and get a nice image for it. Now. If you've decided to build another weapon or and try something else, you can do that as well. But currently, if you're, I'm going to render this out. I'm going to hit F9 and see how it goes. And that's basically it. I'm going to save this. Um, that way, it's ready to put in your image. So I'm going to save it in the proper folder. So sword underscore final now you're going to create another layout just like we did with the um, free one where you're going to put your name and um, throw Photoshop put your Photoshop file together with your name and everything in it and then you're going to export that out again so I'm going to call this PNG save 24 bit okay done now I can hit Z to reline it, front view, uh, left view. If I render it from this view, notice I'm using the, the eye, the, the, this section here. If I hit F9 and render it from this view, I can save this. I'm going to call it sword front, uh, actually sword left, Ooh, left. Ah left hit save make sure it's 24 bit alpha channel set cool and then maybe from the top view we'll do the same sort of thing make sure it's nice and big shift F so I know how big it's supposed to look make sure it's all in there F9 notice the background isn't rendering because we turned it off in the first video I'm gonna save the image and we'll call it sword top T-O-P, all formats will be PNG, save, 24-bit. Okay, cool. So now you have all of the images you need. Uh, well, let's do one more. Let's do it from the bottom so that we can sort of see perspective view. Um, there, it's kind of cool like that. F9, and we're going to save that one and call it bottom. Uh, B O T O M, T bottom, and call it PNG and save it. All right, great. So there we go. That's done. We've saved all of our things. Now we can open up Photoshop and create our file. Okay, so we've got our file here. Now we can go into Photoshop and make sure you have your all of your other assets ready to go. I've got all my assets here while Photoshop loads. And then when Photoshop's ready, I'll come back. Okay, we're back and Photoshop is finally loaded. So once again, we're gonna go to File. We're gonna start a new image. Now, if you want to, you can set it to US Paper, which is good. It's eight and a half by 11. Uh, 300 pixels per inch is fine. RGB color is fine. In the background, let's go ahead and make it transparent. All right, and click OK. 
Now this will give us an image that is fine, but it's rotated the wrong way. So I'm going to go to um, canvas size and I'm going to change it to 11 by 8.5. 8.5 and then click OK and it said yeah it's smaller and that's fine we're just gonna rotate it okay remember we've got our image whoops we've got our images over here I'm just going to drag all of them in drag this one in first it's gonna be cool hit enter do the same thing with the other ones so that each one will be on its own layer sword bottom cool uh, actually you know what we should do let's go ahead and undo this undo that oops Alt undo, well, control alt undo takes a step backward. Let's do this first. Let's set up something so that we can use it over and over. Hit T for text, drag it out up here across most of the top, and then put whatever your period is. So let's say you're period eight, which you're not. Take a space, your last name, and then whatever the file name. Just put that. Now find whatever cool font you want. Um, I don't know, whatever. You can do whatever you want, last name, file name, and then put it whatever color you like. I want red or like a dark blue or purple, whatever. Um, you can also resize it so it's nice and big. And then, oops, come on. Sometimes it's really finicky about that. Okay, cool. So now that's set. Now that lane, that whole section is done. You can go ahead and file, save as, and I'm going to save this... Um, some place where I can use it over and over. I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it turn in default. Okay. That way I can just save and open this one up and then save it as a new file every time. So now I'm going to have this set. So that every time I turn in a file, it's going to be good to go. So you don't have to redo this part and, and get the, the everything set up the over and over. So once again, go back to your images. Uh, where's my folder? There we are. I'm going to grab all of these images that I was using. I'm going to drag them in there. Hit enter, 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 enter. All right, so I've got a bunch of these images. Now, remember, we pick one image that is the primary. In this case, the final one's the primary. So that's going to be number one. We also want the, s the last name on the very top. The final is going to be the top. Now everything else is going to move around. So if I want the left view, I'm going to control T. I'm going to scale it down uh, and put it someplace where I can see it, but it's not in the way. I want to make it as big as I can without having it be a problem or be hidden by anything. There, that's good. Let's do bottom. Control T. I want to rotate the bottom maybe so it looks like that. I'm going to put it there. Once again, it's in a good spot. Top control T. I'm going to let's rotate it like that. Make sure it's I should be able to hold shift and it'll re it'll go into like an angle snap sort of thing. And then that's the top view. So there we go. Now, file save for web. And because you're just going to save this for web, it's already set for the image size is appropriate. It's going to be nice and high detailed unlike the last one we did. And we're gonna save it as a PNG 24, and then transparency's on, go save, and I'm gonna save it as, um, instead of turning default, it's gonna be your number, which is whatever underscore last name, underscore file name, okay? Oops, file name, cool. So, of course, this if you're in second period, it would be two. Your last name Smith. It would be two Smith, and this would be weapon. All right? In this case, I'll do it. Weapon. Okay? And hit save. All right. Cool. Once that's done rendering, and you'll see this is going to be two megs because it actually shows you the size, I can go to my desktop and see that my file's right there. I can double-click on it, and then I'm ready to turn that in. And that's what you're actually going to turn into me. So, that's it. We did our uh, exporting, we did our rendering, we're good to go. And so next week, we'll start with UVing, which is super exciting. So we will see you next time.